evidence of validity in the study of Pianta provided preliminary support for the validity of Kaplan and Main's attachment theory-based systems for classifying children's family. So there's not a lot of uh, um, systems out there to help us code family drawings. So we, we had to choose one of the uh, most widely used that had actually a good validity. Now the CBCL is of course a very widely used um, measure as you know, 113 items. It's used for children between 4 and 18. It's scored on a 0 to 2 scale. And the CBCL consists of set 10 subscales uh, that yield T-scores. In the study, however, only four were used, externalizing problems, internalizing problems, aggression, and social problems. High T-scores above 60 indicate that the child falls within the clinical range. The descriptive results were actually quite um, clear cut. <laughs> all the drawings were classified as ins all the drawings that were classified as insecure avoidant belonged to the, to the maltreated children, while ten drawings that represent a secure attachment pattern belonged to the non-maltreated children. The maltreated children scored much higher in all categories on the CBCL under investigation than the non-maltreated, and all maltreated children scored be beyond 60, which is a clinical score for the CBCL. As you can see, it's just a, you can see from the means, the differences between the uh, B, which is a secure attachment of the maltreated and non-maltreated mm -hmm. children. Here is a picture of an 11-year-old boy with no evidence of uh, maltreatment. You see some of the uh, statements on the uh, coding system. We see firm, open-armed, embracing stand of the members, all family members smiling, and an essentially happy, realistic, calm overall impression. In comparison to the 11-year-old boy who, who was maltreated, unfinished objects, the bodies of the figures in this case, and a pleasant exaggeration of the facial features, the smile uh, on one of the features, the, the big one. Another example, a maltreated nine-year-old boy versus a maltreated nine-year-old boy again, a non-maltreated nine-year-old boy. Uh, from the 10 uh, maltreated children, only one used color. There was a complete absence of color in the drawings of maltreated children. This is the only case that uh, color was used. Um, the arms are absent from one of the um, figures, as you see. There's an overbright, unrealistic sweetness added to the picture, such as hearts, balloons, and a Christmas tree. And it, it wasn't a, a Christmassy period. Uh, man written results were also contacted to see if there was a significant difference between uh, the categorizations uh, in the uh, drawings and also the uh, CBCL. And as you see, the level of significance in the secure and insecure uh, categories and all the scales of the CBCL, there was a significant difference. Concurrent validity, in order to bring the two measures together, correlational analysis. Uh, was carried out to examine where the family drawings were validated by the CBCL. Significant negative correlations were found between the subcategory of B3, which is uh, um, uh, secure attachment, and all CBCL scores. Significant negative correlations were also found between sub, uh, subcategory B1 and all CBCL scores. So as secure att attachment was going up, and we have CBCL scores going down. Subcategory B2, again, a positive correlation was found between subcategory A and social internalized problems. And also, as the items included in categories A, C, and D, which were the insecure attachment patterns, uh, children's behavioral problems, as indicated by the CBCL, also increased. A comparative study of the family drawings of maltreated children and non-maltreated children was contacted in this case to improve our understanding of the impact of presence and absence of maltreatment on their attachment styles as expressed in their drawings. In this study, the maltreated children displayed significantly more items in their drawings linked to the insecure attachment pattern, while the non maltreated children made use of significantly more drawings linked to secure attachment patterns. Similar results were found in Carpenter and Piperno et al. Discussion as well continuing. Maltreated children scored higher on the CBCL than non maltreated children on all the categories that were investigated. All maltreated children scored in the clinical range. Again, single results using maltreated children were found in Kelly. This was further confirmation that 
child maltreatment disrupts the normal course of children's emotional and social development, putting them at risk for a wide range of mental health related problems, including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, criminality, and other forms of poorly regulated behavior in the future. The correlation between the two measures indicated that the family drawings were was a good measure for assessing the impact of maltreatment, as well as of a more stable family life on the attachment patterns. Obviously, as all studies, this one carries its limitations. The small number, obviously, of the cases does not allow for any final conclusions to be drawn. So this work can only offer suggestions about the representation attachment patterns in the family drawings of maltreated and non-maltreated children. Then another limitation is found in the wide age group of children, 5 to 11, the ability of children to draw. This can account for the relationships found between the drawing features and attachment theory. Sex, intellectual ability, motor skills, and the fact that all children in this study came from low income and low educational families is also another factor that uh, puts limitation in this work. To conclude, the data from this work are consistent with previous studies showing that children's family drawings can vary between the normal and the emotional stressed population. Along with other variables, the two groups were matched by age, taking into consideration that age obviously may play a significant role in the child's ability to draw. This study was the first to investigate the attachment patterns of maltreated and non-maltreated children through the family drawings, at least when it was done. So the current study is, is novel in this respect, and especially being the first of its kind to be contacted in Cyprus, a country that it's very difficult to have access to, to, to the um, maltreated group of children. This study uniquely lies in the fact that it was under trade taken in Cyprus, a country other than the US or the UK, where most of the project, where most of the work on projected drawings has been previously conducted. Final note, children's unique and individual drawings can provide valuable information regarding personality and self-concept. However, drawings should be used with caution and as part of a larger assessment and not by themselves to help professionals provide the most accurate interpretation regarding the population of children. Based on the current and previous research, family drawings can help professionals recognize emotional distress in children, but cannot act as indicators of abuse alone. Finally, more research is required uh, in order to evaluate the real significance of the results from this study. And as I said, the paper is online and it should be out in hard copy very, very soon. Thank you.